Hello ladies and gentlemen again, back to Trailer Park with more Star Trek Timber. Uh, this time we're going to be finishing off, or at least getting to the, the right back ends of the original series with uh, with Kirk. Just before Picard comes along, we're saving Picard till next week. Uh, we are I, we are now joined joined again by our usual compatriots of uh, Kenny and Chris. Hello. Hi. And we are joined again by our resident Trekkies, Art and Mitch. Hey. Hello. Right, and so we're just going to get straight into it, because we'll probably have... I'm not entirely sure how much we're going to have to say about these ones, but uh, we're going to start off with Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. The interesting one. <laughs> Star Trek IV, The Voyage Away from the Theater, because you've pretty much just seen it right there. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Thinking the exact same thing. Chris, when we finished the trailer, Chris went, "Well, don't need to see it." <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's an extraordinarily long trailer. Even oh, by yeah, like, yeah, other really. trailer standards, it's really, really long, and it goes through Every the entire plot, even the romantic subplot that's going to go on with eventually with Kirk. They, Every... Actually, the thing I thought was absolutely ridiculous was the crew of the Starship Enterprise. With the Enterprise nowhere in sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And we went to each crew member and we did some campy line that they're known for. It's not even the entire crew. It's just the breach crew, basically. Mm -hmm. Not um, the engineer. I thought it looked quite fun. It, it looks like Chekhov and um, the guy who played Scotty was just having fun with it. They were finally on screen and they were just Having it up. <laughs> Actually, the, uh -huh. the thing I take away from that is, uh, you know, they almost, if they could have thrown in a few random cartoon sound effects, could have passed this off as a comedy movie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I, was I mean, we are laughing at it. Oh, it does have a lot of comedy beats in the movie. Yeah, I was thinking this had the mid-80s written all over it when they yeah. started shifting action to action comedy. Something they do still today. You can't have an action movie today without a bunch of one-liners and people trying to make a joke out of it. Yeah, the cheesiest Started exactly. right at the time. But in the beginning, like with Star Trek Voyage Home, they just went all out comedy with things that before were action shows. I think that this would fall under the line of so ridiculous that you have to sit down and watch it. I think you just have fun. It's one of them, those films <laughs> that you'd sit down when there's nothing on, else on telly and just watch because there's nothing else on telly. You know how, like in other um, film series where they have like you know multiple films, eventually they run out of settings, and so they finally do like you know Leprechaun in space or, or whatever. <laughs> I kind yeah. of feel like <laughs> this is the inverse of that, where we took Star Trek on Earth. It is. Star Back in Trek time. It really is. Yeah. It's Star Trek. On Earth. In a time and place we know. The only way that that would have been even more awesome is if they had a rise cracking black kid. <laughs> exactly. I think... I think they bring in some more tropey... Kind of few of the films for inspiration. They want Ghostbusters. They are very popular. And they are a comedy. Masters of the Universe. Hmm. Earth now. Let's smack them together. Star Trek Voyage Home. Wow, I can't. I can't believe you brought up Masters of the Universe. Wow. Right. Ah. Uh, Jesus, that. Dolph that, Lundgren. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Basically, exactly the same thing. They need to go to Earth in the current time, well, in the eighties, to get something in order to save their own world. Uh -huh. They can save the planet if they save the whales. Yeah, yeah. that was basically, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although there was very little mention of the whales. Uh, well, you the... got the tail. Yeah. It's yeah. funny, it was so long, yet they missed out the whole actual plot. You get yeah. a snippet of it in the beginning, but towards the end, 
it just started being, oh, the Star Trek crew are in the 20th century. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think that's pretty much the only thing they really wanted to sell was just the whole out-of-time aspect for for the crew. And it's kind of like, oh, look, isn't the Star <laughs> Trek world a bit so weird? Oh, It's like, well, uh, You know, you do that, you have that sort of uh, fish-out-of-water plot for the crew. But then, of course, they're taking fish out of water as part of the plot. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure many of your listeners are going to point out that uh, whales aren't fish, and I apologize for lumping them in that category. Yeah, I don't. Be. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. um, awesome scene in it, because uh, most of us have seen it. Um when uh, Spock tries to mind meld with a whale I think <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, my favorite mind meld <laughs> as, as my favorite is when he okay. mind melds in the first season with a rock not well, a living rock but still a rock I remember the scene where uh, <laughs> they need to build an aquarium for the whales and they don't have the materials for it. And so Scotty is teaching someone how to make like clear titanium. And it seems to me that that's something that would have been easy to prepare before you left. Yeah. 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 Let's just face it. It's the first minute and a half of the trailer where they actually were doing Star Trek. And then everything else just kind of fell apart after that. Mm. Yeah. Love the way George Takei said San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> I think this might have been the movie where he, where people started noticing that whenever he says something, he oh makes it my. sound sexy. Oh my! Because <laughs> <laughs> he had a rather squeaky voice before that, but after this movie, this movie and beyond, his voice sort of dropped dramatically. Well, hey, it sells tacos. <laughs> anyway, the movie is quite enjoyable, though. Yeah, it's funny. It's not the best Star Trek movie, but you know, no, it's not the as best. We've already but it's mentioned we the have many memorable scenes. Yes, it's gone down in history as one of the well, it's nice that it's classics. Well, and it's nice that it's different. Like, uh, there's no like throughline villain. Or anything. I mean, yeah, this is a the probe, but Mama. it's not really in the movie much. I keep right? getting it up, but that is Rama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We got a two-hour episode of Star Trek there. Yeah. There's there's no other way to put it. I mean, well, if, if you're about that, great, grand, wonderful, watch it. You know, it, it's not that bad. You know, except for uh, you know. Yeah, they could have made money. a two-part of the original series, yeah. but, uh, you know, so it's not like the first one, where you have a three-hour episode of Star Trek, but it's a one-episode spread over three hours. Here it's actually more like, instead of making a two-part of a series, we throw them both together and call it a film. Yep. So would you say that the much lighter tone that this one was going for was... Uh, better than, well, sort of improve the franchise, because we all had a big laugh over Search of Spock, and how sort yeah. of stupid and silly that was, but yeah, this one is all about going back in time, and it's sort of the same sort of wishy-washy sci-fi premise as Search for Spock, but how does, uh, how would this one uh, compare to Search for Spock? Well... It's already better. Uh -huh. I mean, it makes us laugh for a legitimate reason. Mm. Well. And, I, you know, I think at this point in the history of sort of Star Trek, um, the fan base is whittling down, and this movie might actually draw people in who hadn't been big fans or watched it because it looks like it still might be funny, and it's going to do only the things that everyone already knows about the show as opposed to, you know, this last film or whatever. So basically, that was the second time they rebooted the franchise. Um, 
don't they use that whole slingshot around the sun to go back in time thing again? I, think I believe they do. A legitimate <laughs> reason that I think they use it. First contact. Yeah. First okay. contact. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And I think they use it in the the new one as well. Okay, I haven't seen that yet, so I don't know. In the new, mm. no, the two thousand nine one. Oh no! Uh, no. no, he that's, uh, that's... he understood power from the Nova created by Spock accidentally. He uses the power of that to power some time jump machine. Oh, okay. He ripped time and space a new one. <laughs> yeah. Right, so would we, based on the trailer, would we go and see Voyage Home? Like, if it, if it, it came out in theaters. Hmm. Well, from the I length of it. the trailer, it almost I almost don't need to see it. Yeah, I, I pretty much yeah. do a pet peeve thing of, well, don't need to see it, so everything's in the trailer. I would do it, but I wouldn't feel good about it, because, number one, everything's already been shown to us, and number two... Everything has already been done in that movie. I mean, we we know what life is like on Earth right now. Why would we bother going back to it? I would probably not see it because the trailer didn't really appeal to me. It's it's for a corny comedy, and sure, it's a sci-fi comedy, but I don't really go for that kind of thing. I would see it if it comes on TV, but yeah, I would I'd not sit pay there and, for and watch, Yeah, I'd sit there and watch it if it came on telly and there was nothing else on. Yeah, pretty much same here. Yeah. It's just, it's... I don't but, know, it just seemed too silly more than yeah. anything else, because it was... Cause, well, because it, it's obviously just going for the whole um, oh, this is these characters, fish out of water, whole sort of thing, and it's just going... Because uh, these days it's... It's well that sort of plot line and that sort of story is now just a writer's cop out most of the time now. It's it's when they've run out of ideas they just go, Oh yeah, let's just do this. So it all depends on if it's funny and if it's believable. And but knowing the film knowing the film, I would go and see it. I would pay for a ticket to see the film knowing the film, but not based on that trailer. Knowing the film I wouldn't. <laughs> I would say, knowing I would the film, it, prices for tickets for that. Knowing the film, I just know that ticket money would go straight to Shatner. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not necessarily okay with that, you know. But it, it's one of those you just have to see to know what everybody else is talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. don't cheat on the chat. Yes. Hasn't that already been done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just, well, it, last time I saw this movie, I just didn't really like it that much. It's, I much prefer Star Trek when he's when he's actually getting intellectual, like when it goes with Wrath of Khan or some of the like some of the Picard movies. I think mm -hmm. it's this one. It just, it was just too silly, and it was too much of a cop, too much of a sort of writer's cop out to, for me to go. Oh, I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. But it is one of the even number ones, and uh, as uh, lore yeah. predict, it's, it's an even one, so it's good. <laughs> no, not necessarily good, but it's not shit. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah, it's not as bad as search. It's, it's, not, it's not as bad as search for Spock or the original motion picture one. The original motion picture one was just very, very overly long. The search for Spock right. was just dumb. This one is just. It's written silly, but that was kind of the point. So it's just mm -hmm. eh, not interested, you, rather than it you being know, actually bad. It's what you get when you have uh, what was his name, Harvey or something like that, who wrote uh, Wrath of Khan and Search for Spock together with Leonard Nimoy, who directed didn't it. just direct this time; he co-wrote it with Harv. Mm -hmm. So well, the silly parts. Of Nimoy together with the master crafting of Harv, and you get Voyage Home. Mm -hmm. I'll speak for most of the Trekkies out there that are going to hear this. After the ripping we gave for the last movie, you know this is just the continuation of the lie. <laughs> They're still yeah. lying to you. They just they just quit telling you directly. <laughs> it's their mm. last voice. We're just kidding. 
so with that we're gonna end or end end it on that one uh, we don't really have much else to really talk about Voyage Home. Voyage Home is really one of those throwaway ones more than anything. It's fun, kind of silly, uses the franchise a bit, and that's pretty much it. We almost apologize for wasting 25 minutes of your time, viewers. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to move on to the penultimate original crew uh, set. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Do we have to... Is well, that the one that will take so long? This is getting to the point where I haven't seen them. So from from this, because I've I've seen the original four and the first two of the new two. That's it. I haven't seen... I've seen about two of the Picard ones, and that's pretty much it. So we're getting into the areas of I have never seen these ones. So this is going to be interesting for me. Mm-hmm. So it really this. is the final frontier. <laughs> <laughs> Count this yeah. and lucky. Let's get to the trailer. And we're back again after watching that, and, well, I, I think we're going to save my thoughts until, uh, well, I think we're going to save my thoughts until after, well, actually, no, I'm going to start off with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, I think it's because I am the one out of all of us. Oh, you know what, no. No, the thing is, no, the thing I'm is, the critical captain. No, the thing is, no, I'm, no. I, I'm the one so far that hasn't seen it, so I think I'll start off, because mm-hmm. I think all four of you have seen it, have seen mm-hmm. the actual movie itself, so it's... Uh, Go for it. Go for it. It it didn't necessarily seem that bad, but it <sighs> but it was the whole sort of thing where you, you could tell where it was because you were because you were saying that this this came out after the Picard TV series started, yep. and it's such a huge departure from sort of the Picard style generation where it's um, intellectual, well it's kind of intellectual and also things like that and this one is just almost cartoonish and it was like <sighs> I can sort of mm-hmm. see what they were going for and it's like no, when you have the whole thing of like with uh, um, Scotty at the end banging his head and you, you can hear the cartoon sound effect when he hits the floor and it's like oh god it's I had I had the dubious timing to stop that right on the credits. And this is the one for certain that should have been just renamed Star Trek V Shatner's Wallet is Empty, starring yeah. William Shatner, written by William Shatner and Harv Bennett and Dave Lowry, and directed by William Shatner. Right. So, so much it's not ham. surprising that it's This is Star Trek Star Trek V. William Shatner's ego is like the final yeah. frontier. <laughs> We've been to space. We've been through time. We've even traveled across dimensions because, you know, the pilot of Next Generation. And now we're going to the final frontier. Shatner's demented mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, going so to the center the of thing. the universe, which itself seems kind of... Wouldn't that be the first place you could go if you had like warp drive technology? So it was like, oh yes, we're going to the center of center of the center of like the galaxy, or the center of the universe, whatever. It's like, I would have gone there first. It, well, it's it's a pretty obvious <laughs> place to universe. go. You know how right, it's where all the stars are. in the Star Trek universe. How immensely far they can go and how quickly they can get there. That is in quadrant A, a quarter of the galaxy. And they were talking about going to the center of the galaxy from basically the opposite corner of the quadrant. So the whole deal with Voyager was that they were going over to, I think it's quadrant D or something like that. So they went to the next quadrant over. That's why it took so long for them to get home. Uh Uh-huh. So, no, the first place would not be the center of the galaxy. Maybe send a probe there. But I think they mentioned in the film that they have sent probes there and they've lost contact with them. Yeah, Voyager happened. And not the ship yeah. Voyager, I mean the, the probe Voyager. That's the one. Yeah, Voyager yeah, happened. Um, okay. Trade reading level probe. 
if I had <laughs> never seen this 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 film before, and I have, unfortunately, I would have thought it would have been Star Trek V, Best Friends Forever, because it was just huh. William Shatner, um, uh, Spock and Bones. And I've heard stories about this production. Um, spoiler alert, but the movie is, what, 30 years old? You needed yeah. to have watched it already. Um, in the film, um, I think like half the crew turns against... Kirk? Is that right? Yep. That's the right one? Yep. Roughly. Uh, um, and I've heard that in the original script, Kirk actually wanted Spock and Bones to turn against him as well. So it would literally be him against the crew. And the reason why it didn't happen that way is because the guy who played Bones and Leonard Nimoy had such a stink, like, raised such a stink about it, like, that is totally out of character for their ca characters, because they've been so friends with, with, with Spock, with them, Kirk, for so long, that no way in hell are they gonna just turn around and decide, well, we're evil now, deal with it. Right, and, you know, there's also that whole thing, like, you know how in, in Star Trek 2, it's that, you know, Kirk is smarter than, than Khan. Here, right, Kirk needs to be smarter than God and I can see how <laughs> Shatner would, would find that an appealing role to, to take on and I think that was his sort of direction that he wanted to go against the whole crew to prove that he was right against all of them I'm glad it didn't go quite that far Yeah, but Just if you want to know how bad this movie is hmm. the script writers themselves in the next generation retconned the entire movie yeah because yep. the guy you saw in the trailer spoiler spoiler again is Spock's brother in when he appears in the next generation he claims he never had a brother yeah they just pretend yeah. this movie didn't happen yeah even oh, yeah. script writers themselves and one of the writers of this entire movie Nimoy just completely retconned the entire movie saying it never existed yeah remember that time when you and your brother went and saw God I don't know what you're talking about I don't have a brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gene Roddenberry wrote it off too saying nah it's not part of the thing so, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'd agree with him there that's just yeah. so, Although, so, so this was the first so this was the first actual like full write-off, like full retcon of something, because yeah. because they had been quite faithful with the series that was before, with generation coming along. That we, yeah. so this was the first actual retcon. First well, only that I know of. And two, like there's when this movie comes out, right? It's after Next Generation has started. There's more Star Trek fans uh, than ever, and so it has a huge like opening weekend. But then of course it's just so bad that you know everyone hates it. And I got to do something the, to sort of like. Oh. The production value was so low of it that the list of errors made uh -huh. is huge. Oh like my they God, the, the, one, the yeah, shaft. They showed the one in the trailer when they go up the turbo lift shaft. Right. The number, you know. I think it was like decks, 72 yeah. or some shit. Decks on the starships are numbered from the top to bottom instead of the bottom to the top. And you can see how it starts on like 46 and halfway up is 52 and then he goes up a bit more and it's 34 and then 70. <laughs> yeah. You can see part of that in the trailer. And uh -huh. actually, hell was, was, was up with him climbing that mountain in the beginning. No, that, I mean, like, that was him climbing his ego. I mean, in the like film 60? they explained it but not in the trailer. In the whole reason why Spock went up in his hover boots and said you don't understand the gravity of the situation <laughs> was he that, just making they a were, pun? No, they were. Yeah, that was a pun, but uh, they were actually holding a conversation at the top there and talking about how Kirk should not be doing this stuff mm. because 
Kirk as a character was getting too old for it. He's like 60. And Bones was sitting down there talking to Spock before then saying stuff like, I'm too old to patch him up again. He's going to kill himself. The hospital is a long way away from here. You need to get his ass out of the mountain. And then they spend 90 seconds of screen time singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Yeah. Do you wow. want to talk a bit? I had in- almost forgotten about that. Uh-huh. Do you know in the bit, the bit in the movie where I, I basically, basically said, um, "Fuck this movie." <laughs> the bit with Scotty. Mm-hmm. Like, I get if he just turned around. And it banged his head on there. You know, I know the ship like the back of my head. Turn, bang. But he took a good couple of steps. He took and a you good could see. couple of steps. You could see. Are you see telling me face. he couldn't see that beam across there from like 10 feet away? You could mm-hmm. see on well, his face. They should have retaken it, but I bet they took like 50 shots of that. And he just couldn't stop looking at the thing that he was walking into. <laughs> this kind of goes back to... Two men to... walk into a bar, and the third one comes along and says, you'd think the second guy would have seen it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it well, kind it of, been, it kind know, of goes Shatner. back to what I was... Yeah, it kind of goes back like, to what I was saying about having it be sort of extremely cartoonish. And sort of th- th- them sort of being... Them, was, them see- seeming like they're playing almost caricatures of themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the big yeah. difference between four and five. In four, comedy was okay because it was Star Trek with comedy. In five, it's caricatures of Star Trek. Well, I think none of that should be surprising with Shatner directing. Yeah, the hammiest oh. man on earth. Well, he's such I, a, a ham. When I saw that, actually, I literally went, "Yeah, fuck this movie." Turn the telly off. I'm, 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 there's a beautiful day outside. I'm going to enjoy it. Life is too precious to be wasting it. From this there is actually only one thing, only one thing in this movie that was not retconned. God's awesome outfit. Because it shows up <laughs> later on, spoiler alert, after uh, Picard dies on the operating table and Q meets him in the afterlife. And lo and behold, yeah. he's wearing God's duds. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a nice nod. Well, if this came on television... Oh, well, sorry. If this if you saw the trailer, would you go see the movie? There's only one answer for this. No. Sorry, no. sorry. Hell no. Thank you. Uh, after, see- after seeing all of the films that came before it the I, 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 I even well even I'm not that interested in seeing it because even just just by judging all of the just by judging it by all of the films that came before I'd be like yeah this is the end of the franchise this is where they should have ended the old stuff because this is now just this has gone beyond just being dumb like search for spark or just being sort of overly campish like yeah. like like voyage home this is just crap are this we is ever... when they. This is when they jumped the turbo shaft. Are are, <laughs> are we ever going to talk about the the scene in which fifty year old Ahura is dancing naked in the in the desert? Oh, is this the film are, when that happens? Are we gonna yes. Are we gonna touch on that? Right. And are we already we have moving swiftly along. <laughs> <Good for her. laughs> I think from that we'll move on from this distraction and move on to the last one. I move on to the last trailer of um, Undiscovered Country. Another one I haven't seen, but it is the last one of the full Shatner crew before Next Generation came along. Uh, who's who's seen this one? I have. I have. Oh, I okay. saw it in the theater. Oh, right. Oh. oh. Did, you oh Did you get the heart attack there? <laughs> I think you just had a heart palpitation. It just kicks in the door. <laughs> yeah, I started the theater. What's up? <laughs> well, no, it's it's an it's an wait. It's it's an even number, so it's I think it's okay, mm-hmm. right? Let's see if it holds it's, uh-huh. it's an even number. We're okay. It's an even number. We're okay. Okay. Let's see if it's okay with this. But you might want to. I, I might advise everybody who decided to go ahead and see the trailer for Star Trek Five uh, 
find whatever is handy under your sink and just wrench your wrench your brain off real good and then come back and watch this. Number six, here we go. Okay. And we're back from watching that one. Um, I think we're going to start off with the person who actually saw this in the cinema. Because I think, cause I think they probably got more. <laughs> they probably got more things to say than we do. Especially, so uh, we'll let you start. Yeah, this was the first Star Trek movie uh, that I had seen in the in the theater. Uh, the last one, the the Star Trek Five. Uh, I was too excited about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade that summer, and so Star Trek was not on my radar. Good choice. Yeah, right. Thankfully, uh, but yeah, I, when I saw this movie, I thought that was it was great. Uh, I thought this trailer it took me right back. All the same nostalgia feels of the the cool action, the the Klingon and Federation tension. Yeah, I remember quite enjoying this from this trailer. But also, at this time, I'd been watching Next Generation for a while. And, of course, there's a Klingon right there on the bridge every episode. And so I think this also served as a good uh, way to sort of bridge the old hostile Klingon ideas into what they've been doing on the Next Generation at the time. With the same guy, even. (laughs) With the same guy. With the same freaking guy. Michael Dorn. Because Michael Dorn, in this movie, plays... Colonel Worf. Yes. It's which kind of is the same. <laughs> wow. No, okay. it's not just the same. You know how in TNG, and it's not really super explained, but there is this whole plot about Worf's father and grandfather being charged with treason against the Klingon Empire. Colonel Worf uh-huh. is Worf's grandfather. Hmm. So this so, came out at the perfect time. Yeah, so they included the character to sort of give that backstory that they never gave in the series. Nice. Didn't Worf grow up with human parents? Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. How did that come about? His father was executed and his entire clan was exiled from Kronos. Okay. So Worf basically was... Worf and his brother was... Orphans. They were adopted. Um, I can barely remember it, but uh, this trailer kind of refreshed my memory, and I remember the story being quite, quite good. Um, but as soon as you saw the person, person on the ship, new face, you were like, "Yep, know who did it." <laughs> Or, you know, who did it? Any, mm, mini, mini, that one did it. I feel like they were trying to be Wrath of Khan, but not quite there. I got more the feeling that they were. Uh, they went, okay, we've tried this comedy thing for a few ones now. Uh, it didn't really take, but people really like this new show, The Next Generation. Right. Let's do. A next generation movie, but with the cast from the original one, yeah. and yeah, it you know, let's tie it more. into the next generation by you know having characters that are tied to the backstory of actual characters in next generation, mm. and yeah. thereby making it relevant. Yeah, uh-huh. it, it's, it certainly saw it certainly seemed a lot more sort of politically driven. Yeah. Well, it, 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 at least, at, at least within the Star Trek universe, of going, oh yes, we have, we actually have to do the Federation thing and protect these people, rather than do all sort of things. So there's a lot more sort of rather than going, oh yes, we're going against that bad guy because he's the bad guy doing bad things of badness. It's it's it's, it's, it's this time it's uh, we must defend these people because we're the Federation and we have to. We are the bad guys. This is our and- job. Kirk was doing that reluctantly. Like, he was like, these people are animals. And they were like, well, you're the one who's going to have to be dealing with them. Just because you said they were animals, you're the one who's going to have to uh, negotiate that uh, treaty deal. And for those who have seen the film, knows that, you know, Kirk has spent his entire Starfleet career 
basically fighting against the Klingons. Being raised uh-huh. with Klingons are the enemy. Oh, and indeed. on the evening of his retirement, he gets pulled out from his retirement party saying, oh, by the way, uh, you have to go and sign a peace treaty with the Klingons now. And they, I think they kind of dropped in the whole uh, search for Spock thing with David in this as well. That's why he was so reluctant to do uh-huh. it. Mm. Um, you really get the guy coming up to, to him and saying, I've heard loads of stories about you. I've always wanted to meet you. That you know, kind of stuff. And I remember there was this huge, huge thing about him just not liking Klingons because of what happened to his son. Like, he would have been happy if he never had to deal with another Klingon ever again after that. But it does sort of, you know, it does show that Kirk at that point was more than just a character. It sort of humanized him a bit. Anyway, it's a great movie, and that was a great trailer for it, and I would uh-huh. definitely see it based mm. on that. Yeah, even having seen the movie, I would, in a heartbeat, go back and see that one again, because that's basically one of the big pivotal points in Federation history. That's a big deal as far as the entirety of Star Trek is concerned, and anybody who claims to be a Trekkie better have seen this. So, yeah, absolutely, I would have seen it. And it's also interesting, too, just by sort of context, right? This movie's coming out in, in what, 91, mm-hmm. and the, the, seeing the Cold War start to fall apart and the Soviet Union start to uh, dissolve. We're mm-hmm. getting a lot of that same sort of echo in the Star Trek universe. I'm not sure which one caused the other, but I like to think that Star Trek ended the Cold War on Earth. That's and it was movie. recorded at the time that the wall in Germany was torn down. Uh-huh. You had, and uh, apartheid ended at the same time. Mm-hmm. So this entire shift happened at the same time as they were making this movie. Yeah, this, yeah, this has always been the quite interesting thing with Star Trek as the sort of extended franchise that it is, is that it's, it's always been at kind of the forefront of some of these socio-political causes. It's like right at the very, very beginning with the TV series, you have people like Michelle... It's like uh, Gene wanting to push Michelle Nichols as a big main character, but just purely because there weren't many black female characters on TV. And it's like, no, we want to make a statement with this. We want to make... We, just go, she, we want to make her as as much part of the crew as Shatner, as Nimoy. It's, uh, and then we have with this, it's very much going for the socio-political aspect of Yes, there's these people on the uh, on the other side of the world in Eastern Europe and in Russia who are going to come over to who are going to come over to the West, and we have to welcome them. We can't just call them the bad guy anymore. We have to welcome these people, and yeah. it's quite interesting that Star Trek has always, well, at least the original version of Star Trek has always pushed that. I'm not entirely sure if the new ones have. They're just more action movies. But these days, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what to see if they continue on with that sort of um, sort of social consciousness in the TV series next year. Well, absolutely, they've already done it with, and I know I keep bringing up Deep Space Nine, but Lord help that TV show that was brilliant. What would people think of this movie? as the last of the sort of the last of the old crew because after this it was just TNG I think so how how would you think this as an ending to um sort of the the old the old guard I think it was a they should have just ending, to be honest. yeah I think it was a they good save if nothing else god they it would have just skipped so 4 and 5 old. and just gone straight to this and that would have been perfect that yeah. would have been the best way to make up for search or yeah, search for Spock. Would have been the best way to make up for it. But you know, Shatner and his wallet. The, the, the fluff in the middle. If it if it went from first, second, third, then this one. Um, yeah, it would have been good. It would have been a good way to to just end it because is it in this one where you you basically have. 
the ending splash scene be everyone on the ship, every single person of the bridge crew be on the bridge and they Kurt was in the chair and then you've got uh, Spock and Chekhov who, who Spock and Chekhov and um, Sulu are at their places um, and you've got uh, Ahura coming over and, and just standing with phones mm-hmm. and uh, Scotty came up as well from the sh- and, and you just have a nice panning shot of all of them and that was like the, the, the fantastic goodbye and Sulu turns around and says where to captain and yeah. Kirk just points and says the star to the left yeah second star to the right and uh-huh. straight on to morning yeah <laughs> yeah so we're going to draw that to an end for this episode the second episode of the four that we're going to do of Star Trek Timber if you enjoyed this video then uh, subscribe to the channel for more stuff to make sure you don't miss the next two episodes to come and like the video, share the video dooby dooby doo, all the usual stuff that everyone keeps going on about uh, yeah, so it is goodbye from me, goodbye, it is goodbye from the usual compatriots of Kenny and Chris goodbye Bye. and it is goodbye from our very special guests Mitch and Art goodbye take care And we will see you next week for more Star Trek trailers.